Close enough. I'm warning. What do you think you're doing? I'm staying out. If you're looking for a handout. You want to speak with my husband? Watch what you're doing. You're looking for company. And no, I'm not doing this could bad. Every day. Hey, watch it. Maybe one day I'll venture out and see if she's right. Hey, hands off. Stop. Come on.
Hello. Everyone is doing well. How's it going there, Samurai? And Black Man Lion, how are you doing? Nope. Slightly up. Eh, yeah, slightly too much. That's better. How's it going, Garrett? Liking the outfit and the hair? Uh, currently, I just got out from a shower, so... It's, uh... It's a little bit more voluminous, and then having the headset also covering it makes it uh, stand out a little, little bit more poofy. Also, you were completely correct, Mirror Samurai. Um, I had like a few tabs that I had to close. One of them was 9gag, and there was a video that started playing, which was asking Iranian women how much they had in their bank account. Like, this sounds very sus, but it was... It was literally that, and I was like, oh, don't need that, and I just didn't realize that the desktop audio, of course, also outputs it towards the stream. So, uh, oops on my part, I guess. It sounds weirder than it is, I promise. Anyway, how are you all doing? I am not planning on doing a stream as long as the one I did last week. <laughs> I've... Um, I've had quite a... I, I was, like, done the entire day afterwards. I couldn't sleep. Uh, I... Or rather, I slept like a brick, but then I just couldn't stay awake the next day, which fucked up my sleep schedule, so I couldn't sleep the day after. It was a lot of fun playing the Radiant Dawn Draft Race practice, and I'm going to do it more often. Probably not going to stream it every single time, but I would like to get my time towards the 5-hour mark instead of, like, almost 8 hours... How's it going, Wolf Strike? Oh, you're finishing up part three right now. Well then, uh, good luck. And Garrett as well, doing good. Finished randomized chests in the tower, so you just have to do some paired endings, the runes, and more basic combo. Ooh, the final beta is ready. And always good that you're uh, doing well. Recently thinking about your fan game. Not anything you want to add right now? I mean, you can always just let it simmer for a bit, just have it uh, mull it over. And then once inspiration comes along, then you'll probably have something to think about. Ooh, promotion outfits, uh, good. Like, I don't... I'm not really all that good with sketching, but I'm curious uh, what you're going to have at some point. It's why I'm going to... Like, I'm not the greatest fan of how AI is used for, like, most applications currently. Especially, I'd rather prefer AI to do my dishes and laundry instead of, like, the art and crafts. Let me do the arts and crafts and then let AI do, like, the mundane tasks. That's not the way it's going right now, but... Cessa. And, of course, the fact that a lot of the AI um, learnings are currently based off of stolen art, which I'm... Not a big fan of if it's uh, for, like, stuff that's being sold. However, I do know that, like, what I want to do with Daybreak is going to require a little bit of extra art, uh, some new characters. I'm really hoping to do the same thing that Makai and Ike have, and Soth as well, where they change outfits depending on what kind of uh, class they're in. And if I'm going to, like... If I'm going to use AI for specifically that, I'm only planning on using it to train it on the characters that already exist inside of Radiant Dawn. And then also like try and from that prompt your own stuff. And I'm of course not trying to commercially sell this. So it's like, um, of course it's technically still stolen art, but the application is feels more morally correct, which of course is like a very hypocritical thing to say because where where I draw the line is often where I'm like okay with the stuff that I need. So like it's still not perfect, but I am not in the position to commission a lot of people. Uh, I mean, a lot of people don't, hardly anyone even does the art for in that style. So I think AI is my best bet currently. There's been a few people making that as well, and as long as it's not for monetary gain, and just for 
a passion project, I like I'm cool with that. Yeah, that thing costs money. Like, I know that I'm technically um, not really addressing the problems, but the way I see it currently, I don't have any other options, and the damage I'm doing is minimal. Because technically it is from a game, and of course, I have bought the game, so you could argue I haven't, um, I'm not using stolen assets, because I bought the game, I maybe got the ROM from somewhere else, but like, technically I still have the game, I can, I can, on my own, get the art and the stuff that's from the game, rip it and then use it. But yeah, as long as I'm, as long as I'm not going to try and like, sell it on Steam or whatever, then it seems fine to me. Uh, that said, a lot of other places, of course, aren't doing the same thing, so... Uh, there's still a lot to be done, and I really hope that governments will, like, regulate it stricter. So, oh, around Procton Pill and 3E is done. You have... Remind me, what's your team, Wolf Strike? Like, you had Aran, Ilyana? Actually, I can probably get this from somewhere. Actually, I think I can just show everyone the... <coughs> I can probably just show everyone the team that Wolf Strike's currently using. Give me a second. So Wolf Strike is currently running Gatry Carry with Tanith for the desert. And Elincia for uh, Izuka kill, Iran and Ilyana as part one carry and secondary carry for the Grail mercenaries, Shinon, Makalov for some extra utility in part two and three nine, and then Kanegis um, Warum is of course really useful in one endgame, and Nasir is there because he has a lot of characters that don't actually meet the thirty four speed benchmark, which is Gatry, Tanith. Um, Aran, I'm not sure about. I think he makes it. Um, Ilyana, Makalov, and Morm. Like, all of these characters don't get the benchmarks that they... Like, they don't get the 34 speed benchmark with the easy mode bonus. You need... Uh, you can get 39 speed really easily, but he still needs Nasir, which is uh, why Nasir was picked there. Of course, he has Kanegis to one round KO a lot of the... Um, a lot of the auras, but still. No. Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> I see, you just want to draw the promotion outfits because you enjoy, enjoy designing stuff, like, then go for it. Uh, I mean, no one's stopping you. I tried doing i tried doing like drawing uh, it was actually a part of the curriculum in high school and i just wasn't i wasn't that well versed in it and it didn't grab my attention so self-contained and if you just keep the machine learning within the bounds of the game exactly and yeah youtube actually did recently add a policy where you have to specify they also have like a new a new um tab which allows you to say like oh my content contains this or that or that or that or that and it's really easy because luckily they also implemented a button like i don't have any of this and then you can just submit it and it's really easy for the advertisements they of course still do a scan but at least you can preemptively select like oh yeah this is part of the content and i don't know um that seems like a useful addition draft uh, daybreak draft competition when when the game is done and i don't know maybe at some point don don 151 will do an ltc uh, of daybreak he'll have a lot more options i can tell you that much also i hope everyone enjoyed the dark magic showcase which of course was like was the last one I 
I do have a few more ideas, especially wind magic. I might I might make a few changes to the things that we currently have. We of course had a few animations like the restore staff or the triangle attack, which. Ooh, that. Is that coming through double as well for you? That's better. Yeah, I'm actually looking into, still looking into recoloring, uh, like all the, all the spells because if I can make them just slightly different, uh, even if it's going back to purple, then. I'd have a slight difference between the actual Reaper cards and the Dark Tomes, for example. Same thing with like being able to use Blue Fire, but uh, as we're saying for Wind, like there are a few animations. The Triangle Attack has that green wind effect kind of like coming across the character, and that might be a good replacement if, I don't know, the current animations don't really hold up to the quality that the other ones do. Um, I was here. I've been making a few few minor edits and not much so far, but I'm starting to add characters to the map as well. Some of them are going to have uh, <coughs> locked skills like the Wild Shift. So this is a Feral one. And this one has pretty much the full text available. And of course you can see that I'm also trying to add in a few things like the um, texts with changed color for like important information. And then our big friend Colbert is still here. Uh, we have the pillage AI. We have uh, the arsonist AI. This is a uh, 3-9 of course. Ashra is here because we have mantle and aura. It causes 5040 F damage. I don't think that's... I think that's supposed to be 50% of damage. But that 5,040 damage is uh, quite a bit. And of course, uh, this one also now, Mantle, says that it grants Nihil and Fortune as well. And that was pretty much where I was. Uh, that was the last bit of coding that I did. And as you can see, there's not many characters left on the map. However, uh, I want to go. Yeah, I want to go back to base. And if we now go to skills, you can see that if I remove the shade skill, I can, of course, because this is one of those skills that has multiple options, I can sh assign shade for free or provoke for three, serenity and tempest all for one. So it's still, even though it's uh, a unique skill or a, an innate skill for Ilyana, you can see that for everyone else it still costs capacity. And even when she removes it and then re-equips it, you still get the bonus of it being an innate skill. I don't actually know if Zeal works. Still need to do some more testing. And let's see, what else did we have? Um, Puffy's Beast Bane, like, this is currently... It might be a small rewrite for Iran, but I wanted to have Beast Bane in there somewhere. Also, where's my sessions, Diana? That's better. I always forget to turn off the music. Iran, of course, is a day in soldier. So he's been raised as a Dayan uh, soldier with, of course, the, well, racism pretty much baked in. And then he was uh, taken in by a Benyon merchant caravan. So I think there might be some application to him having, like, a, at least the racist undertones. Because currently, Iran is kind of a blank slate. He doesn't really have much going on for him, making him a little bit more interesting when he meets Nyla, Raphael, Volug, like, you can see some hesitancy. He doesn't need to be, like, full-on, shin-on racist level, but 
you can at least that indoctrination might be a nice way to give him a little bit more character depth but i'm undecided if that's like a direction i want to go with him it's mostly that i think that the dom brigade has slightly too many goody two-shoes characters there's no shinon there's no um no soren of course izuka is there but like he's obviously not part of your group Yeah, he does have his done with life face. I don't know, it's just an idea. It's like it's something that can be added to a run and it can make sense within the world. However, you don't currently see much of it in uh in Radiant Dawn itself, but it's not something that like has to feel out of place. It might feel out of place because he doesn't have it in vanilla, but if you look at his upbringing, it kind of makes sense. Um, let's see, Peleus, I had a lot of issues with Miracle, like, his Miracle is currently locked because it was locked in one prologue, so his doesn't work, I have to reset the map. But now Miracle is actually also available as a personal skill, or rather an innate skill for a lot of characters. And you can see, whenever I renew remove Renewal... It costs two capacity to give to someone else, however... Oh, here's still a mistake. Um, so for Anna, it's not supposed to. Maybe it's just that I gave the innate version to her and she's not supposed to have the innate renewal. No. Uh, it actually is working as intended. Currently, I have renewal as innate for Leonardo, which probably isn't going to stay that way. But I had to give it to someone. So if I remove renewal here... Yeah, that's still innate. And yeah, just did a lot of work, uh, added a lot of personal skills, in keeps charm. And I'm actually thinking of something, or thinking of doing something. There's a few personal skills that you might not want to use at certain points. For example, um, what's the best one I can use? Torneo, where are you? Torneo has a personal skill currently that, if I can find him, there he is. Uh, this unit's presence grants inspiration to ally day and militia, empowering them within their, uh, if they're within three spaces of unit. Like this is mostly for him being like one of the great riders and them being one of the four riders, so he's like a legend within Dayan. It's, uh, I believe it's from Heroes, but the idea behind Inspire is that he's the one inspiring the general Dane army. Uh, the way this happens is that they, the Dane army gets a buff, like they get an item, uh, which in their inventory, excuse me, they get an item in their inventory whenever he's in close proximity. And then if he's not in close proximity, uh, the item gets taken away. However, since this isn't really applicable with playable characters, because your inventory, become, uh, inventory can be full, I decided to have it just be with allied units. However, if you want to have... Um, like, if you're in part 4, then this doesn't really do anything, because there are no day and soldiers left. So I wanted to make sure that you can still remove this skill. However, it can be the case that I don't actually give um, give a scroll to this. Like currently you can see that I can equip this skill with the Inspire uh, item, which is in his inventory now. It doesn't have an icon yet, it just says Inspire. And it doesn't cost any capacity. It's mainly because you don't really need this skill every single map. And if you want to use another skill, like if you have if you want six skills on him, then you should be able to take this away. However, I actually thought um, that it might be useful to not actually have this tied to an item. Instead, what I could do is just having it be always applicable so you can remove it and then you don't need an item to equip it. That way it also doesn't take up convoy space. 
because a lot of these personal skills would just be one skill scroll that you don't really have a use for except that one person, but maybe not for that map. And then it just, if you have a lot of them taken away, then they just take up space in the convoy. And I could also just have it not be tied to an item, because the only one who can equip it is Torneo. If he has it equipped, he can't equip it again. So the only time you actually see this skill as equipable is when Torneo doesn't have it, and that means you don't really need an item for it. You could just take it off of him and give it back whenever. And there's a few personal skills, like um, Kieran, for example, he has Reckless, which actually is able to evolve at a certain point. When initiating combat, units fight without any regard for their own safety, losing 6 HP. Uh, you might re recall that this is actually pretty much the same as the uh, Wild Shift damage, um, the damage debuff. I think it just fits really well with, with Kirin. And he's going to get a Reckless Rival skill, an upgrade that does this plus more when he has that conversation with Oscar where he talks about being the rival, yada yada yada. However, this is a skill that I think is that tied to Kirin that I don't want this one to be taken away. Kirin really, for the character design that I have for him, is going to lean into taking damage and then eventually getting into Wrath range, Resolve range, uh, Vantage range, like all kinds of skills that do stuff when he's not at full HP. So yeah, that one is tied so closely to the character that I think it's not necessary to be able to remove it. Whereas with Tarneo, that Inspire skill makes sense on certain maps and is useless on others. So yeah, then it should be possible to remove it. If you don't have a use for it, then take it away. I know for my rev rewrite I tried to do a few things for characterization, but not nearly as much, partly because I had to keep Birthright and Conquest events in mind. I can imagine that that takes a lot of effort, especially because quite a few of the characters actually don't really feel that similar, like they feel like different characters I've heard depending on the route you take, but I'm not the expert, like I'm only at chapter 19 or 21 or something like that with Birthright and I haven't finished the other ones. Of course, all the skills need new icons in the Radiant Dawn icon style. I mean, I'm probably going to keep a lot of them as is for now. I took just a lot of uh, art assets from Fire Emblem Heroes. However, I think most of them look pretty good. Like, the zeal looks good. Um, like, Provoke here seems... It's not the usual Provoke skill. That's with the three arrows pointing. And I think this one looks pretty good. Uh, what else do we have? Like, quick shift with the... It looks pretty good. Pulse shift looks pretty good. There's a lot that fit decently well. I wouldn't say that they're perfect in the way they match the theme of, like... You can see a clear difference between the fist from Unarmed Combat and the uh, Terror icon, which is now Slave's Wrath, which I haven't actually coded yet. Also, I'm probably going to change the name. But like Burden and the Tear icon look really different from the Unarmed Combat, but it doesn't feel out of place. However, there's a few... Um, for those that play Heroes, of course, like a few of these. Uh, this is the Embla skill for Anger Point. Uh, the Laguse Craft doesn't really fit that well. And then there's a few like... let's see... Sometimes, sometimes like the the little, what are they called? Uh, not puppets, but the little stickmen. Sometimes they feel like they're fine with beguiling, and because you also have paragon. And then there's another few that don't really feel that that fitting. I, I think, like fiery blood probably could do with a better icon. It's luckily been years. Or maybe at least a year since I've uh, taken some art assets from from heroes. So there's probably like a lot of new skills that I can just take. This is one of my favorites though. I don't recall what it's from, but like the Protector of Beauty, it has the support icon from heroes. Or bond, so bond icon when you're close to uh, one another. 
and those look like heron wings. And then you have the little crit icon in the background, which really fits well with like what it does. Shelter, I think, is one of the weaker ones, uh, just the horse head. Let's see, then Inspire doesn't seem like the best. Lunge, not that bad, like it gets the point across, but not the best. Amiable, I'm a big fan of. Uh, quick Study, I really like with the skills, uh, like this parchment. Siege Mastery looks great. What else do we have? Oh yeah, and Ink Keeps Charm. Like, even though it's a completely different skill and a completely different uh, effect in Heroes, I just really like the the red ribbon uh, forming a heart for Khalil. And no, you didn't miss anything big, uh, Garrett Fuller. Uh, like, there's... Uh, I was just going through some of the skills, the way they look. Some of them fitting in really well with the style that Effie 10 has, some of them not really fitting in that well. Like, they, they fit in decently enough, I'd say, for the most part. There's a few that slot in perfectly, and then there's a few that miss the mark slightly. But I will have to go through the entire set at some point again. I have a lot of icons I have to make anyways. Let's see, not much else. I haven't changed much else in 3-10 so far. Of course, well, why do you have two miasmas? And they're the wrong miasmas as well. Like those are stage two miasmas. Interesting. No, no clue where those came from. Uh, what else? I did a small pass over the um, the authority stars. Nope. Like, this might seem very small, but it's probably mostly for flavor. But I probably... Like, maybe I could make it so that authority stars affect different units if they're tied to different groups. It's possible for the enemies, but it I don't know if it's possible for player units. But I pretty much put um, kings on four-star level, so Peleus has four stars... Uh, Skrimir being next in line has three. Gareth being a retainer pretty much has one. Anna, maybe you could do with one. And uh, Nasir also has one. A uh, prince who has two because he's like way far behind um, in strength compared to Skrimir. And uh, Yaluchi is a retainer. Raven King, uh, retainer, retainer. You can also see, of course, a lot of the bond supports. Uh, most of these are from Path of Radiance, the ones that made the most sense. So Janalf has Tabarn, Alki, Raisin, and Shinon. And Tabarn, Janalf, Raisin, and Riss for Alki. And Warham, as you can see, has one with Zhark as well. And like here we got to the point where Kisha, technically a retainer, but he's like a retainer of a retainer. So I didn't think that would be, uh, that would make too much sense. However, Leth, uh, pretty much mostly in service to the king and Ronald uh, ahead of her. Gifka being right behind. Let's see who else of the Bay Orc units do we have. Oh, yeah. Um, running. Two stars made sense. Uh, Ike, of course, becoming the general at some point. Tornado probably has one or two. Joffrey having one, Fiona having one. This may seem like weird, but Fiona does have her own like territory that she governs, so I think that would be comparable to um, what Tornado and Joffrey have. Elincia, of course, having four stars, and then. Ashra pretty much has five, and that's it. Sanaki having four, uh, Bastion two. And Loran being the only not actual king that has four. Because he's in direct service of Ashra.
Let's see, what else do we have? I had something else I wanted to take a look at here. Wasn't the character tree, although... Oh! Oh, I didn't like the character tree. I think that might be... I think that might be the game memory getting uh, to its limit. Uh, this was something I talked about previously. Beguiling looks like uh, live to serve, but it feels a bit different. It probably is. Uh, like, I took a lot of skills from heroes. You feel like you need to talk a lot about the several curse realizations you learned with Path of Radiance. Uh, mages have night movement, but to be fair, they at least have low enough con to be easily shoved. Uh, did you by any chance look at the video by Actual Lizard, who was talking just yesterday about uh, mages in Path of Radiance? Let's see, the other curse realization is the... The player unit recruitment in Path of Radiance. Yeah, I actually like disagree with or I don't necessarily disagree with the video. But it's just so weird because I have never seen anyone talk shit about the Path of Radiance mages. Like Ilyana and Soren are pretty much the same unit. Then uh, one has shade, one has adept. So like Soren mostly wins out because he also has some better support. Uh, partners, but stat-wise they're pretty similar. And then Tormod is your yee haha -ha, funny uh, Mage Knight project. And then of course you, uh, if you want to use higher level staves, you either use Ritz or you use Mist or you level up one of your Sages. And then Khalil is really good. She has access to every single Siege Tome. Uh, Bastion, we don't talk about Bastion. But like Generally, magic is pretty good, and then on Maniac mode, they are so good. I remember Typhoon Carter's 100% uh, growth hard mode run, and Soren was one of his primary carry units. Like, he popped off. So yeah, I don't really get where the where the entire thing of Path of Radiance mages suck comes from. I know that Radiant All mages suck. Like, the only good one is a reverse recruitment Khalil, and then, like... Me, uh, Micaiah and Tormod at certain points in Radiant Dawn, but like no one is good for the entire game. I think it's really um, it works to Path of Radiance's strength in the sense that you do really get to know and care about the characters that you do have in the start of the game. But it is true that, like, Mia is your only recruit that really feels new. And yeah, Rolf, Rolf is pretty much the worst unit in the game. Like, Rolf has... Rolf's point of conten contention, like, the stuff he has to be measured against to rank his, his viability is the effectiveness, uh, effectiveness of Wind Tomes. Wind Tomes have two might. So that's, like, four might in versus flyers that's the kind of stuff that rolf has to contend with as like heavy competition that says a lot like rolf was done dirty and shinon just sucks like he's good at the start and then he has amazing growth so he's a fun growth project but he he has nine strength when he returns so he's not good mist however i'd say mist is good This mist, however, is better, uh, except for, like, ignore the 12 strength. So, still picking up. Also, this is going to take a while. Like, I, I still haven't done the rank up stuff. Yeah, they probably could have made Mist level 5 or something like that. Like, it wouldn't have made a bigger, big difference. The thing is, though, um, you do have Master Seals 
you, know, you have like two of them and then one in chapter 21 which you never ever use because like who are you going to promote at that point but i mean those two are pretty much for recent mist only and then you have bonus experience to patch them up and then of course uh with staves they probably just want a level 10 promotion Nearly done. Received Bane. And then Skirmir is the last one. Those rank ups mostly are just for... Um, changing them into different classes. And those different classes have better stats, better caps. Except that I haven't inserted those classes yet so you just get the animations do we have i was looking at mist no makaya where is where is mist transforms because he has alacrity that skill works I can miracle now should work different also I don't know I did change a couple of biorhythm um, pages around for example people with a lot of order have maybe this one is a little bit too ordery with uh, this one being Asheras but I could also in the end make a couple of new ones I could eventually like make unique biorhythm curves for every single unit, but that seems a little bit overkill. Oh, Ashra, you have zero health. This probably is going to take a while. I might just move her towards the bow units at the at top. I really like bonus experience as a concept. Like you can you can help people get further along and you can really have people uh, catch up that way. But I do think there's a I think it would have been better if there was a cap. Like if there was a cap on the amount of levels that you could have, I guess. I really hope uh, Miracle's going to proc like somewhere today because she probably has too high a void. Come on. Oh, we should be fine. Arrows are good for the accuracy. And... Now just taking a look at uh, with the combat because miracles actually change with how it normally works. Uh, miracle is pretty much disabled in combat. Like it doesn't work as in vanilla radiant dawn. Like you die, which means that you also can take like multiple hits. Um, if you were to be adept rock and the brave sword, like you just when you die in combat you die, and then what happens if my game doesn't crash? Damn it. I think I've uh, went too far with the data. I guess I'll have to clean up the uh, clean up the ROM a bit. Like this has a very clear explanation. I was adding a lot of stuff to go to the teaching display. We have our skills here. I have been adding a lot of stuff, pretty much from everything from this lunge skill has been new. So we have lunge, steadfast, and then dark charm, and from here on out, like these uh, hunting mood guidance, that was those were the last skills, and then teleport, 
and then we have like a lot of the innate and cost versions of skills for blessing flourish uh, mercy had a it had a cost version somewhere already so i only had to, had to add this one nullify renewal imbue tempest serenity savior like this was adding a lot of new stuff and to help with that i also had this one like we can see here i have 641 different skills and i've been adding quite a few skill scrolls as well to make this work so here we can see after the night ward we have from 869 all the way up to 893 those are all the new uh, skill scrolls that i have made a few of these probably could go but it means that i'm nearing the end not necessarily of these files but of the e-common file and the e-common file is one that's I don't know if I said this before. Let's see, where do we have the come on. Screen work with me. The e-common file has all the descriptions and text that has to be accessible at every single point in the game. So these aren't chapter bound. And this is a list of Oh, you can't see that. That work. I guess I could do it like this for just a second. Display capture. This is the entire list of e-common. Like we have all the item IDs, we have all the... What else? What's coming up? Uh, the skill IDs, a lot of text from vertical, horizontal, background music, uh, chapters. Like it just goes on and on and on. Job descriptions. Uh, skill descriptions, item descriptions. And there's still no end in sight. Almost ready to make my point, because this is all just still the base game. This is all the base... Uh, that was the base game, and here we have uh, the end. That is scene 26. And after that, we have job ID Blade, no, uh, Blade Lord and True Blade and Halberdier M, Halberdier SP. And here you can see, for example, this is Halberdier, but there's an exclamation mark somewhere in there, which is just, just a typo, but those all also get recorded. And I have all of these. And this is all daybreak. This is still all daybreak. However, you can see there's a few things like here, there's literally a zero and here there's literally a C. These don't have any context, like there's nothing in there. They're just typos when... Uh, let's see, I can... Those are just typos from when I tried to type something in and it didn't, uh, I wanted to reset, but it saved mid typing. And those all also just pretty much clog up the data and the file structure. So I have a program that's able to look at what I have in the e-common file and then take a look at, are there any entries that are empty? Like there's no text in there and I can remove those. And that cleans up a lot of space. But yeah, it's uh, that's just a chore and I have to do it every now and then.
but as you can see daybreak has a lot of entries already like i'd say maybe 75 percent of that stuff actually is meant to be there They do okay. And now I was planning on just fixing a few of the skills that we have because I've um, like I made a list. Everything that's currently in the game works as intended in the way that it can be assigned. I can take away and give skills to characters as I see fit, and that doesn't create any issues as far as I currently can see. However, that doesn't mean that the skills currently work. For example, Quick Salve, uh, which is unit has Kanto. If unit enters a battle, unit loses Kanto because then you can use an item and still move away, but you can't battle and move away. Uh, I haven't coded that, that yet. So what I was planning on doing is just going through here, typing in SID underscore and taking a look at like what do I have? What skills do I have? And do I need to modify anything for those? Skills. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, it is a lot of stuff. And yes, it is indeed the plot beat that Miss has perfect balance in order and chaos and that she doesn't lose her mind from touching the medallion. Or rather, she just has a lot more order in her than chaos. Pretty much the same way that... Um, the same way that Mist has a very stable biorhythm curve, which is just pretty much a flat line. Micaiah just goes up and down, up and down, up and down. It's very chaotic. And I might make, make it even more chaotic. Like, there should be the possibility to just create a biorhythm curve that's best, worst, best, worst, best, worst, best, worst, pretty much. Where you just know very well when you're going to be in best biorhythm and when you're going to be in worst biorhythm. Which, of course, is either very funny or very annoying for an LTC because if you have it so that it's exactly if it lines up with the predicted LTC like you're trying to route a lot of stuff and you have the best biorhythm like lining up every single turn where you want it to really be impactful then it's great but if you are not on time and you're like one turn off compared to the biorhythm with your LTC planning then every single time your most important turn like your turn one every single time is going to be worse by a rhythm. First off, we have Savage Check. And Savage Check pretty much shouldn't be that weird. Uh, Savage Blow is going to be a mastery skill. Like, I'll probably take a stream to look at it, uh, see if I can just make some new biorhythm curves. We have Savage Check here, which is just a pretty much a check to see, um, to have a hidden skill, do some work in, in the background. Then it, uh, let's see, if the unit has any hill or if the unit has mantle, then it doesn't work. And I don't need to check for parity because the unit, um, like Savage Blow is only on initiation. So it doesn't really matter because parity is only on initiation as well. I could, of course, make it so that if unit is using parity, then it doesn't work. But that's really hard to code because when do you see when you're using parity? Like I can check if the skill is in the inventory, but then you'd always disable it. <laughs> oh, apologies for that. I uh, I didn't have as good a night's rest as I thought I had. Apparently, 
someone is laughing at me. Let's see, we have like this is all just skill ID boss. That's just checking uh, every single tile that a unit can be attacked from. That's uh, if that's a boss unit, so either branded spirit charmer or just the boss of a map, then it doesn't apply there. So these are all very easy to go through. And we're getting as in just over one minute, so I'll probably uh, leave it at that for now. I'll go to a quick be right back. I'll get myself a cup of tea and then I'll be back when the ads are gone. So stay put or don't uh, take a small walk, get some tea, get some snacks and I'll see you in just a bit.
slightly over time, but we're back. Let's see, uh, where did we left? Uh, where did we leave? We were at this arm. So that would be... I had so many issues with disarm. There was this one disarm slot that didn't seem to do what I wanted it to do. It was... I don't know which one it was of these. I think it was this one. Turns out I had this empty. Which meant that that stupid uh, skill was still read as... Um, as skill ID release, which I was trying to search for disarm the entire time in the search bar, so I couldn't find it. I was like, why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? Why can't I find this? Why am I able to equip a disarm skill that I cannot find within my game? That was the reason. I just didn't have it... Um, I just didn't have it written down anymore. The name was gone, and that... That made sure that I wasn't able to find it. But now that we have disarm, we have... We have to take a look at how it works. We have, in essence, uh, the skill ID for cost and being free. And then we have release uh, 1, 2, 3, and 0. So this would be disarm skill release 3 would be fine. Because that's the final one. 3, 2, 1, and 0. I think we can turn down the... Stick ever so slightly. So if we have the phase, then mind get me. Uh, we look for a character. If that character has release three, then and if that unit is Leonardo, then we clear three, and we add the skill release, and we also add release F. And do I think that should be? I think that should be release zero. Because I think this is a trigger, if I recall correctly. It's been a while. This is a trigger for if you kill the unit while you have... Um, while you have disarm ready. So let's say you kill the unit and you proc disarm then it uh, goes back off of cooldown because you you pretty much didn't use it. So this is the way where it goes back to release 3. Like another piece of code says, oh, you proc disarm. So from release, we go back to release 3. We enter the cycle anew. However, that's uh, fine. Except when you Leonardo or your Brom then if you kill the unit while proccing disarm, then we put you back at your cooldown is still ready. However, the difference I had to make there is uh, instead of re using release F, we use release 0 because these are going to have different... Um, these pretty much have different uh, capacities and when you're on the map, you're pretty much only seeing zero capacity for all these skills. I could make it so that you have like different skill lists for the free ones and the capacity ones, but that's only for in the base because otherwise, otherwise it would just take way too much. Uh, like I'd have to pretty much double the amount of the icons that we currently have here. Same thing here, however, like, these are copy-paste, that's why you still have Leonardo and, uh, in this case, Har. If we go to Impale, we have Impale 3, cost, 
and zero. So same thing happens here. We have to turn this back into crush zero. <coughs> and then without the underscore. Skill ID soaring. I can probably do this a little bit easier. There we go. That is still visible, and we'll pull this out that way. That way, I can also see it really easily on my own screen. Let's see, um, we have soaring that is impede. Oh, it's of course also at the top. And that is also soaring zero. I don't know who this is going to. Like the characters here, of course, can be changed at any point in time. I don't know who these are going to go to yet. That's going to be whenever I get to map design, character design, like see who has see who has um, not that many skills and if they fit the character. Mame is the next one, which is also grander zero. So we go to zero here. Is this how I want it to work. I guess for now it's fine. Next up, paralyze. Paralyze zero. Yeah. Always nice if you have some consistency within your own within your own writing. Shock has shock zero. Dead eye. This one is definitely going to har. Uh, it's called slumber, of course. Dead eye one, dead eye two, dead eye three, dead eye four. So here it's uh, going to be. guess this could be dead eye one for now i guess it could also be dead eye f like there's there's a case to be made i don't recall what the what the skills did like how the countdown works so i guess maybe it's better if i look at that first also release zero isn't that wrong yeah, that is wrong, so... Can leave Deadeye as is. Skill ID Drain. Um, I don't recall what Skill ID Eat did. Do I even have that one? It's a good question. Like this might also be a little bit of leftover stuff from Exalted. Yeah, skill ID combat heal, that was it. Uh, so that is something that, like, is just a hidden skill. So that's fine. And then... I don't know if I have skill ID drain anywhere, but that is specifically for Meg, so... This can... Was... Yeah, that part can go. So for all the code still works, that's also very important. 
and the poison sword here is probably going to work slightly different. Then we have lethality kill. Lethality works based off of how many kills you get, so you have to kill X amount of units. Wick warp. Uh, that is... That might be a combo. I don't need to touch that right now. I think that works as intended. Uh, however, we can go to Bane. So we have Skill ID. Oh wait, we have to go to Lethality. This is like so stupid. Lethality is Bane. Like this is... It's just so silly. Uh, these are backwards. So we have cost and free, and I don't know if I'm going to actually give lethality to anyone other than um, Volk, but I thought I may as well make it. Then if I do ever need it, it's there already, or if anyone else wants to use it at some point, like if they want to make their own, um, this route, their own skills for their project, then this could be used as a base template. If unit test is Bane, and this is a... This can be placed during a battle. So if we get Bane, clear Bane, and add skill Bane, however, that means that here we need to add another skill. That would be Bane Zero. If we have Bane 2, we get Bane 1, that's fine. So V6, V6 is 2. That's not necessary. Although I guess I could just leave this for now for any other characters, so... Yeah, it's fine. So we have... Bane Zero. Hey, it's fine if you want to be quiet, uh, or if you want to share stuff about the fangame concept. Yeah, the Discord server, I've been working on a few things already. Uh, you may have, may have noticed that I added some stuff together, like the crowd control and the FE10 mods, for example, and I cleaned up some of the rewarp staff channels because some of them fulfilled the same role, uh, the daybreak section, and everyone now has a member role just to have basic access. That also allows me for any new people to come in that they have to answer a couple of questions and I'm going to add like uh, I have added a at the top a channels and roles section where you can be notified of either Twitch or YouTube videos because I want to face out the at everyone uh, part so that I can only just target the people that are actually interested in the YouTube videos or in the Twitch streams. Uh, I don't know why it's like double there right now, but that's fine. But I have been working on like updating it a little bit, mostly for new people, and I might at a later point also add like a few more just general topics of conversation. Uh, the like general gaming uh, latest video discussion, I don't know. Maybe some uh, Maybe some Switch era talking or like spin-offs, 3DS era, DS era. 
I'm not sure yet. But I'm happy with... Oh, what, what am I moving? I really cannot wait for my mouse to come in. I'm... Like, it's slipping so much. But I have been just restructuring it, restructuring it quite a bit. And it's a lot more tidy now. And I'm working on a video with, like, the Q&A with... The thank you for 1,000 uh, subscribers. It's 1,100 by now, which is absolutely fantastic. I've uh, I've worked on a few things. Like I'm I'm going to mention it there, like a little bit more in detail. But I've opened a Patreon and channel memberships, which are priced the same as uh, a YouTube or a Twitch uh, subscription, just so emotes can be the same across the entire thing. I've added the emotes to the server as well, the Discord server. And yeah, that's just a couple of updates I'm going to do in that video with like the Q&A, thank you, and maybe a few more tidbits about Daybreak as well. But I still have to write the script for the video. I'm not really comfortable with just uh, winging it. Even if I'm not going to uh, read it out exactly as it's in the script, I want to have like a lot of bullet points that I at least don't forget anything. Like I know this Khalil part, like Khalil is going to change, but it might be useful if it's uh, for any other character that I do want to add it, then the code is still there because she isn't going to have quick warp anyway. So this is fine for now. However, here we do have to Add Bane 0. Excuse me. Because otherwise, uh, because we have Lethality here with Bane 0. I might also make it so that it's... Um, I might also make it so that it actually is 4 kills instead of uh, 3. Like you start with 3, 2, 1, 0 and then you go to Bane. That might actually be a better idea. Uh, but I'm not sure. And then maybe for like, maybe for uh, Volk, it would be way less. Let's see, the flag skill isn't all that interesting because it's a hidden skill anyway. Uh, I did code this entire thing. And then Miasma doesn't have any skills involved. That's really easy. Uh, streak. This is currently for Edward, but was that going to be Edward's mastery? I think that. Yeah, I think that was going to be Edward's mastery. So that means I can go. Let's see where is it? Um, hot streak. Currently, it is a... Why do you not have an icon? That's a good question. Copy icon to 346. There you are. Uh, let's see, where were we? With Hot Streak, it was going to be for Edward, so I can give this to his third tier class. So that would be True Blade Edward. Edward focusing all on just all out attacks, crits, uh, reckless, reckless attacks, pretty much. So here we add skill ID streak. I'm not planning on having each unit have their own special mastery skill, but I do want to create a lot more variation between them. Uh, the best I can uh, talk about right now, because there's five of them, is currently Edward is going to be focused more on recklessly attacking and having critical hits because like low defense high offense fits him as a character 
His uh, personal skill is Fiery Blood. And that doesn't mean like I made a version that costs some capacity as well. Just because it might be something that... Or maybe... Uh, no, it's not. It's maybe not as personal, but at least like a personal skill that can be given to others as an innate skill. Um, but it gives you strength plus four with basic weaponry when you have uh when you're not at full hp so slim bronze iron steel silver weapons uh, will give plus four strength if he's not at full hp that really fits in with his character and then he's going to focus a lot on critical hits whereas z hark with his adept is going to focus a lot on speed uh using skills like not so much critical hits but mostly skill procs and then um, Lucia is really on base stats with like combat being with parity as an idea and then lastly we have uh, Mia and Stefan. Stefan of course has Astra and Mia may have like range advantage or maybe more magical swords like there's a lot of stuff like a lot of variations between the characters but maybe Hot Shriek with like the crit up can also go to a different character but then maybe on a hawk or on a pony like maybe a paladin so the characters that you do have uh the classes are different and they may have the same mastery skills but you won't have like this two two very similar feeling characters with the same mastery it's going to be very different feeling characters with maybe the same mastery they both work with crits but one of them is range one of them is melee that kind of stuff Okay, I'm gonna take a look. See that Fangam concept? Uh, Fire Emblem, they do reinvent the wheel every every game or two. That's certainly true. And go for a fate style system. Attack stands, guard stands, those kind of mechanics. I mean, that's good. I have heard only praise for, like, for the pair-up system in fate. So that's a very good basis to start off with. Didn't mean on dragging the the tea bag with me. I don't know how how far along you are with the with the idea, but you could even do. Um, I'm just spitballing here, but maybe if you have a staffer as your attack stance, quote unquote, partner, or maybe if if they're a guard stance user. Uh, they could block an attack and then when the guard gauge is full they would not only block an attack but also maybe cast heal or cast like depending on the staff they have like they could cast barrier on you or maybe they do that if they're in attack stance instead of doing bonus damage it would be kind of a support stance instead of a guard stance so you have like you're in the same the same place as attack stance you have like your healer next to you and you attack or you get attacked, and instead of them doing a counterattack, you they heal you or they cast the barrier, kind of like whatever you uh, whatever they have equipped at the moment. Like that's just that's one of the ideas. Uh, yeah, staff bonking would be nice, but doesn't always work. No, 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 no. Where's my streak? Yeah, okay, we're back. Seeing gameplay stuff, you did have a bit on a uh, thought on the class system. I would uh, be wary of doing too much three houses. Like the idea of, yeah, okay, never mind. You you answered my worries already. Uh, one base class and two reclasses. Every class has multiple promotion options. Wouldn't that be more of a 
you might expand on this, but wouldn't that be more of the awakening style? Where you have like one uh, one base class and two reclasses? They can only access one promotion by default. Oh, they'd have to get the other one through either friendship seals or partner seals or class certifications, like depending on whatever you want to do. Let's see, uh, Death Streak if. This is fine. Skill ID Lycanthrope. Um, this would be, I believe, Triumph. No, not necessarily. Access one promotion by default, uh, base class where you get two. But also by earning class XP, you have to master the class in order to let you take their skills into other classes and such. And by mastering a class, you master their weapon types, which then allows you to bring them into other classes. And that's how you unlock more promotions. I mean, that's, an, that's a nice system. Uh, of course, it would depend on, like, you have to balance it, uh, how... Quickly, do you get weapon experience? Are there any modifiers like the discipline scroll or arm scrolls that allow you to do that? Is there maybe a character like Lysithia who gets weapon XP more easily? Uh, that makes them have a niche, of course. Yeah, so for things like Malignite or let's say you have Great Knight, you would have to... You could be a Cavalier... And you could go into Paladin, and then you can reclass into, let's say, a uh, Knight. And you would have to get the Knight stuff to be able to go into Great Knight. If that's, uh, if I'm reading that correctly. I would be wary, wary with how many classes you have to go through, uh, depending on the length of the game. Uh, but as I said, that's mostly a balancing thing. There's modifiers for that. And you can only get there with... You can only get to that point by, at some point, starting to test and get a feel for like how fast things should go. But I do like the fact that you want to limit class, um, class variety a little bit, because that that still enhances the unit identity compared to Engage or especially Three Houses. A test skill, if Lycanthrope, if Pathways 1. This seems fine. An adept. Same thing, seems fine. Adept costs and We have zero. So here we, he would also need to get uh, Adept C. Actually, that would be... That would have to be Adept Zero.
Then with main, same thing applies. Grandeur is zero, and the biggest one is six. So everything past this can go because we have grander zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then C and F. So we don't have any seven, we don't have any six, we don't have any nine, and don't have any eight. See, disarm is the next one. This arm has zero, one, two, and three. Release zero. One, two, three. That seems good. And then cancel is cancel four, three, two, one. So this would be if unit test skill cancel one, clear skill cancel one, and then go to cancel don't need that that line. Here we have three gives two, four gives three, four, three, two, one, and cancel itself. Oh, there's a full class, uh, full reclass texture mod for Fates. That's great, because a lot of the characters so far that I've reclassed do feel rather boring. I know, I know of the. I came across it like a few days ago. The fun fact about Candace not being able to reclass into Bow Knight uh, as an adventurer. I believe it was Bow Knight, because uh, the the. Developers didn't want to make a fat version, like, not to be mean or anything, but that's, like, literally, uh, like, Candace is, has a unique model as an adventurer, and she's, like, the only plus-size character in the game, and they apparently didn't want to make a, didn't want to make a new, uh, model, which is just kind of mean. I mean, I... I know that it's, like, fancy and you want to be inclusive, I do get why most characters are going to be like why most characters aren't going to be like the uh, like Candace or Meg or Brom, but I do wish some of them would be more like that. Not not just uh, not just for inclusivity, but like Brom seems very as a very uh, normal looking guy. Not everyone has to be shredded, ripped, and a supermodel. I love Gonzalez, I love Garrett, like the characters that don't really look that amazing. I have not seen a YouTube channel that doesn't love Brom and Meg. Uh, this entire thing with Colossus can go. Okay, nothing breaks, that's good. Uh, skill ID no count doesn't really matter. If the unit has Corona... Um, I guess that would be...
does this do again? It's been it's been a while. So I think that should indeed be here we have flare zero, so this should also probably be corona zero. Because that means that the skill at that point is active. Yeah, Japan is very blunt about weight stuff. I mean, I still don't think... Um, I think there's a limit to where, like, stuff kind of breaks immersion. I mean, you're still fighting a war, so at a certain point, uh, this, there's like the um, the opposite of... I don't know if you've ever seen that, that interview where the guy that plays Samuel Tarly in Game of Thrones got this uh, comment or like a person asking him, him a question, like, it's been six seasons, why are you still fat? And his reply was like, there's a series with fire-breathing dragons, the undead, and, like, massive wolves, shape-shifting assassins, or, like, face-shifting assassins. And me still being fat is the thing you find unrealistic and where you draw the line? Like, I get that idea. On the other hand, I don't think it would make a lot of sense if you had, like, a character that had, um... Those, those people... Like, you can also go too far. There's uh, um, those two women uh, with, like, they had their own show or something like that where they couldn't get out of their bed. Like, that's something that I think shouldn't be glorified in any way, shape, or form. Like, you can still love yourself, but you can be unhappy with where your body is, of course. Um, but I think that shouldn't be something that should be put in media in general as something to be to aspire to. And if if a character were, like, that size in a video game and i'd kind of find it weird if they're in an army like how do you how are you supposed to fight like that like i'm there's limitations i love characters like brom and meg because they are a lot more realistic and i love those characters a lot more um you have like it's fine to really love characters like altena where she you can see her six pack in the cg and like with she's a legend so the image that people have of her is going to be a glorified version. So she's going to be like perfect in, perfect in every way. That makes sense. But then if your entire co army consists out of supermodels a la Engage, uh, like there it's pretty much in supermodels and children, that just starts feeling weird. It doesn't feel realistic anymore. So I think it's a, uh, yeah, it's and children. I think it's just a matter of being tasteful with it and not trying to like lean too far in either direction. And currently I think that me gaming media in general is too scared of having characters that don't really, that aren't considered conventionally attractive or beautiful. Yeah, we should have. We shouldn't have been that uh, that weirded out by engage because we already had like fates with the entire. Ah, but you're not actually my my brother, so this is totally fine. You're my first cousin. It's still fine. <laughs> yeah, younger playable units have always been a thing in Fire Emblem. Like the what's one of the first ones? I think the youngest ones that really seem like really out there are Yubello and Yumina or Yulia I can't remember oh yeah it's not just Azura I mean aren't the Hoshiden aren't the Hoshiden uh, ones still like technically family because of Mikoto Azura is also just dumb Step siblings, but no, wasn't it? I mean, the lore there is just—it's still—it's still icky. 
Maybe it was just Azura as like a first cousin. I know that the 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 Nor siblings aren't related, but they're like the same upbringing, which is also like wrong on so many levels. I mean, young characters and medieval dark politics in Game of Thrones is good and loved in general. I wouldn't say that it was loved in general. Yeah, but Mirror Samurai, what about your, your unit builds and your eugenics? Like, you want to get the best Kana of, like, a third generation, so you take, like, you marry Shigure instead, because that's less wrong for some reason. I don't know if you can marry Shigure, actually. I do recommend Game of Thrones, but like only the first four seasons, because after that, like season five was decent-ish, still entertaining. And then season six, literally they end the same as where they start, like nothing actually happens there. It feels like a lot happens, but every character is in their character arc in the exact same situation. And then se season seven and eight are just their, their Michael Bay entertainment. That's pretty much the way you have to look at it. Uh, it, can, it could be that, like, Game of Thrones isn't your thing, and that's fine as well. But I think it still was a good series. But it's, it's like, a... It's incredible how that series had such a bad ending that it collectively wiped itself out of, like, common media and people's memories. Like, we entered COVID, and people were like, we can re-binge and re-watch so many things, like... The loads of loads of people looked at the office, at friends, at like so many things. Thought and had the idea of like, you know what I want to do? Let's rewatch Game of Thrones. No one, no one. It just disappeared. Oh yeah, the prequel series is pretty good as well. I've actually watched that as uh, well. I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Can't disarm, can't disarm, can't disarm. Okay, this is going on for a while. Enemy phase rain check. Uh, that's fine. This has to be... Zero. Add mastery hold. Flare zero. Mastery hold. Yeah, there is definitely a difference, uh, Garrett, between the way Western media does it and the way Japan does it. But I think that's also, like, just a difference in portrayal. And I don't think the two of them are directly comparable. I think, like, it's a general statement. Uh, not not going into, like, specifics. Uh, because, for example, we do have FE4, which tackles incest and stuff like that in a way darker uh, tone and child hunts than most Japanese uh, media. It's also a lot older, of course, but that really feels like comparable to Game of Thrones, but Engage at totally does not. I must say, um, 
I actually can't go that far. I really have to play the rest of Engage. I think I ended at like chapter 14 or something like that. Uh, I remember doing the Sea Doll map. And then I just, I didn't vibe with the story. The gameplay was good, but it just, the characters were too boring for me. I know, uh, it, I also didn't really do too much with the kids, like I thought, I tried using Anna but she sucks uh, because I didn't really realize she had a really good magic growth and I just hate Jean as a character. I hate Donald, I hate Jean. Like Midori is fine because Midori, she looks realistic, she doesn't have this weird British Cockney accent, but just Jean is absolutely terrible. There's nothing I like about... Oh yeah, Mozu, sorry. Like, the difference between Donald and Mozu... I talked about this in my um, soldier video, but the difference between Donald and Mozu... It's like, Donald has an okay personality, but I just don't like the pot on his head. And that entire, like, the, the comedic aspect to it. Mozu feels way more realistic. I don't... I don't know. Donald is just so bad. Like, he's also just a terrible unit. Like, you reclass him and... Oh, there goes all your lance rank. Did you give him a level up on his map? Short Spear, Slender Spear, this is fine. Yeah, but it's, it's like not a great British accent. It is not good. It's an American trying to do a British accent. And it comes out as like a sort of... Baltimore Cockney British amalgamation. I would not recommend John in the slightest. Aside from that, just I hate Cyril also one of these that I don't really like. I don't like the aptitude skill because the way it works now is ah yes, this unit has aptitude, their growths are better, this is their personal skill, they're the S unit. And then they have like lower total growths than every other character and they just get like barely above average due to aptitude so literally they just don't have a personal skill also i love i love the fact that uh during the awakening times with donald the amount of people that said like oh yeah aptitude is such an amazing skill to pass down as a father and i'm like no it's not like this is the game that has literal literal infinite grinding. If you want to grind infinitely, that means you can get every stat to be green at the end. The only thing aptitude saves you is time. It doesn't give you any gameplay benefit. It only saves real life time because you have better growths. Okay, that is a slightly better use of aptitude. I'll give I'll give Jean that. But Jean is a dipshit and I don't like him, so he's getting the bench anyway. Engage Anna is at least nice that she's different from the other Annas. Like they're all they're trying to differentiate them a little bit, which is nice. But there's not really much interesting else going on there.
I did sum it up, indeed. You don't want to know when I'm getting to... Um, I don't know if Jean is in uh, Heroes. Let's take a look. Jean, Fire Emblem, Heroes. Is he in... Jean shares his English voice actor Colleen O'Shaughnessy with Monica and Kronia from Three Houses and Three Hopes. She also voices Nagi as she appears in Heroes. Jean is not yet in Heroes. That means I can't do a short on him yet. Not yet. Jean is the youngest playable character in the series with a known age at only 10 years old. Jean is also the shortest member in the army. Jean's ring size, according to the ally notebook, is 3F. Jean is voiced by Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog, apparently. But as soon as Jean gets a gets into Heroes, I will be making a shot of him and I will not be gentle with that poor little boy. Also, please don't clip that and take it out of context. That sounded... <laughs> that was not the right phrasing. Uh, that was... That was horrible. <laughs> Oh, that's probably going to become a clip on the YouTube channel at some point. That was horrible. I think, however, that uh, Yumina and Yubelo, they are probably slightly younger. But then again, they feel more realistic. At least at the start, like, you could see that um, Yumina and Yubelo, like, they are taken away and then you have to save them again. In, in the end, they get saved by Ogma and Sirius. And you can at least, while the army is like small, you could imagine that they want to help. And then later on, it's like, no, we really have to protect these kids because you're like part of like the, the lineage and you have to be kept safe, yada, yada, yada. And we now we have a larger army and more capable warriors so you can like stay in the back, stay on the bench and stay safe. But at least it, it could make a little bit more sense, whereas Jean is just like, Oh yeah, I just want to go into the world uh, because I almost got killed and now I want to help other people. And how do you want to do that? I want to heal them and apparently also kick. It really does take a while for the engaged characters to grow on you. I've heard this from multiple people. I just think that if you make a bad first, second, and third impression, and then in like the B supports, in the third B support that people come across, you get like a good support chain. I think that's just a tall order for people to like a character. See, this entire part can be skipped. Uh, Nihil, this is fine. I'm just curious with like Clan and Fram, how many times did they have to... How many times did they have to like clean... All the stewards in that, for that matter, how many times have they had to clean the Divine Dragon? Like, take them out of bed, move them around a bit so that they don't have, like, those um, sore spots when you lie. Older people, when they lie down too much, uh, generally get them. But, like, if you lie down for a thousand years in the same position, you get atrophy and stuff like that. How is Alir even supposed to walk? Probably magic, but, like... I 
I like Etie. Except for the fact that she's... Um, I really wish that, that she had like a higher strength and build growth. Or no, the build growth could be fine. She's a little bit over the top, like she talks about it too much. But at least she's relatively down to earth and that helps her character. Whereas a lot of the other characters are way too wavy, airy and just with their head in the clouds in some way. You hit the nail on the head there, Garrett. I, I fully agree. see if unit tests and it actually managed to get that much done today it's fine oh it's five o'clock already as well i have to start cooking in just a moment i do not have a lot of time left Chapter 7 comes around and we finally get a unit. Uh, Citrine is great. I like Lapis as well, uh, just for the fact that she's a rather modest character. Like Citrine being a noble and like being having like a very dashing outfit uh, that really looks expensive, fits with her character. And Lapis and Citrine are both rather down to earth as well. Most of the Brodia characters are. Uh, Alchris, way too over the top with this intro. Didn't like the jump. Who else do we have? Um, like, I can hardly remember most of them. It's not necessarily Mercenary or Myrmidon. Like, there's a lot of issues with the design, but at least... It doesn't feel as like you get Hortensia very close. Uh, you meet Hortensia very close to her and just the subdued tone of Lapis's outfit makes me like it a lot more just because of all the characters and the designs that surround it. I think that's why I, I like Lapis because everything is so loud, loud and over the top and hers is like rather... Like, it's just one color that has a few variations, like a little bit lighter red there, a little bit more pink here. But it's very subdued and very just normal compared to a lot of the others. It might not necessarily be good, but it just feels more normal than all the over-to-top designs that you get next to that. Hey there, Themos. I am so sorry. Like, I'm just pretty much uh, winding down because I have to start cooking dinner in just a moment. I do apologize. Yeah, just some normal to have the colorful stand out, except here it is the opposite. I like the fact that someone is dressed a little bit normal, normal because everyone is colorful and they stand out too much. There's a few exceptions, like Citrine is, is pretty good. Uh, Kagetsu, even though it's like a very out there design, it's unique and it makes sense for the character. Uh, but Alchrist is way too busy, like Alir is too busy. I, I don't know where we got a jumpsuit for Yunaka from. The stickers weren't invented until like, what, 1900s or 18 or 1900s or like, yeah, maybe 1800s. There's just so many questionable design choices that I don't vibe with with Engage. But anyway, uh, I think it is time to... I think it is time for me to head off because I have to start making dinner in just a moment and I don't want to be too late with that. Because the people that I'm going to cook dinner for are going on vacation tomorrow. So didn't don't want to have them leave on an empty stomach. Oh, 
also engage uh, has denim, which feels weird in the Somnial. Anyway, I've been me, you've been you. Uh, I had I had a lot of fun with conversations. Didn't manage to get to do too much. Uh, I'll probably start coding a little bit more tonight. Just because I have to, like, fix some stuff. But we're getting closer and closer to the sandbox mode. And I'll have a video with, like, some updates on the channel and stuff shortly. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. And I will see you Thursday, where I might do a little bit more draft practice. We'll see. Don't know for sure yet. Anyway, sell out.